let's jump in and let's go create our own payload and we'll do that with a specific tool within our Kali environment called MSF Venom. Then we're going to go away and create our reverse TCP to Meterpreter payload as well through Meterpreter. So we're going to launch, and I've already launched it here, we're going to launch um, uh, our Metasploit framework, so MSF console, and then we're going to create our staged payload in our multi, uh, multi handler environment. So let's do that. So let's create a payload. We're going to get that payload, put it up into Pawn Drop, and then from Pawn Drop, we're going to go back into our Windows environment. We'll use curl, we'll download it, install it, run it, and hopefully we'll get our reverse session. And I say hopefully because, as you know, there's probably a bunch of different things that could go wrong. Hopefully, we get our reverse shell using our payload. So let's do that. So let's firstly launch our uh, MSF Venom. So I'm going to do that. So typically, when we talk about Meterpreter and MSF Venom and reverse TCP Meterpreter payloads, think of Meterpreter is a tool that's part of our Metasploit framework. And we're going to talk a lot more about Metasploit framework in an upcoming video. And think of this as a type of shell connection that we get, which has a bunch of built-in tools. And we're going to do a few things with this, right? We're going to upload and download it. And there's so many different functions within Meterpreter. So MSF Venom is the tool that's going to help us create this payload. We're going to create it with MSF Venom. We're going to jump into MSF console, so Meterpreter. We're going to create it in there as well through our multi-handler. So let's go do that. And we'll continue talking through as we currently do this. So MSF Venom... Um, Tag P for payload, and we're going to create a Windows Meterpreter reverse underscore TCP. So I'm just going to write this out, and as I continue writing this out, we will uh, sort of go through and discuss it. So our MSF Venom Tag P, so this just basically says, hey, we want to create a payload, and our payload is going to be our Windows Meterpreter reverse TCP. And this basically just says we're going to be using Meterpreter. And then we're going to have a, res a reverse TCP connection, which means we're going to have a reverse connection from uh, my target back to me over that TCP protocol. So that's all it is. And then we just have to specify a couple of things. So we have to define our local host. So hopefully our local host hasn't changed. And that's our 193 address here. So let me just go 192.168.1.139, sorry. And our local port. Let's use a different local port that's coming up in this history. So uh, it's probably something that I was playing with, but that's okay. So let's just change the port to be um, 4422. And then we will change, uh, we're also going to do the format. So the format for this is going to be an EXE because it's an, an executable. It's going to be running within Windows. And then we need to spit that file out. So I've created this directory called Meterpreter Windows. And I've done that for a couple of reasons. One is as we create this payload, it's going to dump this payload into this directory. And then when we go into our um, into Meterpreter and Metasploit framework, as we start uploading and downloading documents, uh, it's going to dump them in this directory. So just be mindful that anytime you're going to be doing reverse shells, it's just going to dump the files if you're going to be uploading or downloading files it's going to be taking into account where you're currently at in terms of your where you spawn that session from so just i've created that just a bit of a hygienic process just kind of keeps things managed easily as we're sort of working through this and we can go in and obviously view the the extent of the files now that we're going to create this but yeah what we need to do right now is just to find that the the format of this file is going to be an executable and this uh this Greater, greater than sign is basically saying, hey, now we're going to dump this file and we have to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this our uh, Windows Rev Shell. And I'll put that as an exe. So I'll give that a minute just to sort of, uh, just sort of give it a minute just to create itself. Uh, and the other thing that we can do as well is we can go into our reverse shell that we've created previously. And I can look at some stuff in here. So I can look at, I can just do a quick file and then I can look at Linux attack reverse one and this can tell us some information about these payloads right we can look at well it's an eolf there's a linux standard base here which tells us it's an executable within linux so one we can quickly identify which of these payloads and exploits are available within which operating system that we're going to be launching them against and i can do the same thing with that uh reverse show that we decompiled or we compiled in a previous video as well and that tells us hey this is a portable executable 32 and it's with Windows, so it's going to be used prim prim primarily within our Microsoft uh, Microsoft Suite. So I'm going to give this a few minutes, just to sort of continue doing its path. Uh, and then obviously, here we go. Now it's completed. So if I just do a quick listing, 
there's our shell there. So I can just do a quick file, Windows reverse shell, and it'll tell me the same thing. So, hey, this is a portable execution 32. It's a GUI, blah, blah, blah. Then it's a Windows uh, Windows specific exploit. So that's good. So we're in a good position. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this exe, we're going to put it into pawn drop, and we're going to move it over to that Windows environment that we've been using, and hopefully we get our reverse connection. So Let's also jump into the Metasploit framework as well while we're continuing discussing this because Metoperate is part of the Metasploit framework and obviously it needs it and that's how it works. So we're gonna launch, I've already launched our MSF console. So we're firing up our Metasploit framework and you kind of think of there's too many Metasploits and MSF consoles that you have to kind of remember because we've got our Metasploit framework, then there's MSF console and Metoperate and there's just a lot of things as we continue working through this. So Let's create our interpreter listener, and then we're going to use the multi-handler. We'll create the payload that we have to assign, assign the actual uh, MSF, F, MSF Venom payload to, and then we'll start the listener, get the file across to Windows. Hopefully, we'll get our session from there. So let's go now and create this um, interpreter listener, right? So let's do that. So use exploit uh, multi-handler. Okay. And now, now that we've set that up, so the configuration is obviously a generic payload there, that's fine. So we're going to have to use a multi-handler because once we open our listener, well, then there's something that's going to be, that's needed, but something that's going to be needed there to obviously catch our reverse session coming back from that target. So now we're going to need to define the payload and the handler. Now that the handler is done, we've got to define the payload. And kind of think of this as a two-stage process. We've got to define the payload, and then we've got to create the actual the handler as well. So let's go create this payload. So do a set payload. And now we've got to define the payload. So what we've done before with our MSF Venom. So Windows, uh, what is it, Metoperator. And then that's going to be a reverse TCP. And that should be good. Great, and then uh, we have to set up a few options. So we have to set up the local host and the local port that we've configured. So let's just do set local host, which is our machine here as the attacker machine, 139, and set the local port, which was 4422, I believe, 4422. So launch that, do a quick options to make sure that they've gone through and they have, and I'm just gonna, run exploits. I'm just going to let this run. So now it's actually listening and waiting for our connection to happen. So this is now all within Metasploit framework and it's all within our interpreter session. So we should happily get our interpreter session once we go over and initiate that exe. So let's do that while we're waiting. So I'm just going to go back from here and actually we've got our payload here, right? So let me just clear this out. So this is our Windows Rev shell that we're going to put into our kill this one and I'll probably just leave those actually I'll get rid of all of these because we were already playing with these before hopefully we don't get confused so let's upload the payload so to over to Windows there's our show let's open that up let's grab this unique location let's go into PowerShell here so what have I done here what have I done? clear and then let's just use curl http colon whack whack put in our ip address 1.139 put in the location and then we want our output file to uh what's our output file going to be named uh windows shell.exe okay and there's our windows shell exe so now all we need to do is run this and then hopefully this thing is still listening, which is good. And then once we run it, we should capture the session that goes through our payload that we've created, goes through our multi-handler, and obviously the MSF Venom payload that we've created as well. So let's go do that. Let's launch it. And fingers crossed, looks like it's running without any errors, which is good. And there we go. So bada boom, our session one has been opened. And now we have that Metropolitan session. So now we can do a couple of stuff. We can begin our post exploitation activities and we'll be doing a whole bunch more of this in an upcoming video. So this is just getting familiar with creating this reverse shell session. Um, and then we can begin moving files around, right? We can even move files within Metasploit and within Metoperator specifically. 
like we've been doing with SCP and Samba and Pawn Drop and all these different protocols and ways of doing this, we can also do that within um, Meterpreter as well. So let's do that. So we've done get UID, we can do sysinfo. So it tells us the information about what operating system that we're working with. And now let's list the view the directory content. So let's just say there's some information in here. So let's let's see this file. There's a payroll underscore information. And wouldn't that be handy for an engagement? We see payroll information. Um, so let's go into that directory. And we can also download the contents of this directory as well. So let's just do a quick download. And I want to download student record. So let's just do student record. And then I just have to specify a name for the local machine as we're downloading this file locally. So we can just call it student record.txt. And I'll just give that a minute. That's all done. And where did it take this to? So it took this to our Neon directory. So that's okay. Let's go back. CD home. And it's taken it into there. So it's created that directory. There it is. And I can, if if anything is in there right now, which I don't, well, there's some dummy data in there. So we can use that to obviously dump, upload, download content as well. And let's do an upload as well. So let's upload maybe a file that we've got uh, that we need to maybe um, get across to that machine as well. So let's just go in and maybe create something. Maybe we need to create. Uh, let's do, maybe we get our netcat exe over there, um, or we can maybe create another document. Just trying to think what's the best way to maybe move around this. So let's try doing, So obviously nothing in there, right? But in case we need to do get something across it, so we can do an upload function and then we can upload, we might have to go into the actual directory. So let's go home. Oops, it's in the opt directory. So opt lab. That's okay, just go back. And let's take our first exploit. So there's our post exploit txt file, and then we just have to specify the local directory as we're sort of moving this. So post exploit txt. Where did it take this? Trying to see where it actually took our data. So let me go into the users, to Vagrant. Just trying to see where it actually dumped it. I guess I actually took it into our payroll information folder. That's a okay. game. So it looks like we've taken it into that directory, and there we go. So it's put it basically back into that directory. So it's kind of important that we just kind of know where we are. Um, that way, as we're moving files up and down all the time, they, we don't get interrupted or we get into a specific location. There we go. So it just dumps it in the actual directory that we were in. And that's okay. So we just have to be familiar that if we're gonna move things around, 
then it's going to dump things where we tell it to dump it. So just being mindful about all that as well. So now that we've done that, um, we've obviously moved files up and down. So we've uploaded, we've downloaded, and the document's are there. So that's how we can use Meterpreter as well to also move files around. And Meterpreter is another file connection tool that helps us obviously do that. So using MSF Venom, that helped us create our payload. But not only just do we do that through Meterpreter payloads, but different types of payloads. We can create macros, PowerShell, we can create Linux, and there's so, so many more that we can create within MSF Venom. And then Meterpreter there being a good helping hand to help us create these payloads as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick video. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like to see, just from the basics of creating payloads within Meterpreter, creating those shells, I'd love to hear it. And as always, just want to say thank you for viewing and see you in an upcoming video. Bye for now.